Καλησπέρα σας καλοί φίλοι τηλεθεατές. Καλώς ήλθατε στο πρόγραμμά μας Faces, πρόσωπα. And I have to turn to English. Αν και ο φίλος μου ο Πίτερ Πολικάρ που μιλά λίγα ελληνικά, αλλά he prefer English. Καλησπέρα και κουτίμνη, Πίτερ Πολικάρ που... Καλησπέρα κύριε Βασίλη. Είσαι καλά. Ναι, έχει χρόνια να είσαι εδώ. Έχει χρόνια, ναι. Έχει χρόνια. Μεγαλώσαμε και οι δύο. Γεράσαμε νόημα. Τι κάνεις, είσαι καλά? Μια χαρά, ναι. Είμαι still working, I'm still able to work. Ναι, I'm glad you are here, because you have to talk about, I mean, you are live, you know. My life? No, no, you're live. How long have you got? Because we're going to be here, we're going to be here all night if we do that. Bits of your life. Bits of my life. Yeah, because okay. um, you know our uh, audience, yeah, the new audience, they don't know much about you. No, I'm sure they don't. I'm yeah. sure they don't. So, and we're going to talk about, um, uh, you know, what you're doing uh, at the moment, recently yeah. and now, and uh, future plans, and uh, about thalassemia at the end, because you are a patron of uh, thalassemia. Yes, Peter yes. Polycarpo. I'm a patron of the United Kingdom Thalassemia yeah. uh, Society, and I have been for many, many years, over 20 years, in fact. Yeah. And um, you know about thalassemia, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, on the 19th of October, uh, that's National Thalassemia Day, and we are going to be at LGR. Yes, where Doing you have a, been a, a full day, a full day of a full uh, day of activity. Yeah. There'll be three of our patrons, uh, one appearing in the morning, one in the afternoon, where I'm going to go, and then one in the evening as well. Mm -hmm. And there'll be interviews, and there'll be question and answer sessions. It'll be all things thalassemia, yeah, but yeah. it'll also be a chance to ask us questions about it and mm -hmm. how you can help uh, get involved with the charity. All of those things. So people who don't know about thalassemia, they they can find out that day. Yeah. They can find out that day, yeah. or they can go online at online uh, ukts.org, well. mm -hmm. which is Everything the website. Everything is online these days, yeah? Yeah, including my website. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got a website. Anyway, Peter. <laughs> yes. You born in England. Both your parents are Greeks from Cyprus, yes? Yes, both my parents, uh, God rest them, um, you know, they were from Cyprus, mm -hmm. but I was born in Brighton. Uh, and both my sister and I were born in Brighton. My brother, my younger brother, was born in, in London. Mm -hmm. uh, but we left Brighton when I was about seven years old. Oh, okay. And then we came to London, lived in London uh, ever since then. So. Okay, because uh, you did so much, okay, and you say you need, uh, you know, uh, plenty of time to talk about your life, I want you to tell me about the most important work you did. I mean, you, as far as I know, you studied as a singer in a group. You were playing an instrument and singing in a group. Well, I play the piano. The piano, yeah. And I have done since probably I was about nine or ten years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I did leave drama college to turn professional as a musician. Mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't really last. The, the, you know, the band that I was in split up and uh, suddenly I found that I had no work at all. But it just so happens that I was um, approached by, uh, this is in 1979, so I've been an actor 43 years, it's uh -huh. a long, long time. Um, I was approached then in 1979 by, an actor, uh, by a musician who was also an actor who had written a children's rock opera. Okay. And he asked me to sing in it. And in those days you needed an equity card and it was a union card and you couldn't work without the union card and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I got my first job, uh, working okay. in children's theatre in a, the Unicorn Theatre for Children in Great Newport Street, um, doing a, a rock opera for, for children. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I mean, we saw you in uh, Phantom of the Opera, Miss Saigon, and all these uh, musicals, and you did uh, quite a few, uh, you know, uh, television uh, uh, programs. Uh, the most famous one is uh, Birds of a Feather. Yeah, I was in that for five years, and they still show it in the UK. Um, and uh, there were you know, many, many series of, of, of that, that that were, you know, it continues to run in lots of different places. And it was a sitcom, and I played a, a Greek character, Chris, Chris, Chris. Theodopolopoulos, yeah. <laughs> which is a kind of comedic name, not a really made-up name. And yeah. after about five years, I got itchy feet, you know, I think that's the only um, way to put it, and I wanted to move on, I wanted to stretch my wings. And as you say, I had done a lot of different musicals, I've done a lot of different plays, and over a period of about 10, 
10 years or so because, um, yeah, Birds of a Feather started in 1989. Uh -huh. So after, say, five years in Birds of a Feather, I decided that I wanted to try things on a smaller scale and work in smaller theatres and perfect and hone my craft. Uh -huh. And, you know, even then I felt, and even now I felt that, um, and I feel that I want to continue to learn about my craft and, and um, you know, uh, uh, continue to grow in the um, acting profession, as it were, uh -huh. by knowing more about my craft. And so that's why I, that's why I decided to, you know, take a step to do smaller scale work because all of the musicals I'd done you know they'd been in massive theatres like you know the Theatre Royal Drury Lane I worked in the London Palladium um, I'd worked at the Royal National Theatre at the Royal Shakespeare you know theatre so loads of very big venues and I decided to work on a smaller scale so yeah but uh, you you wrote some uh, material as well yeah yeah I did yeah. I wrote um, at the time uh, this was going back to about 1987. I think I'd done some work for Theatre Technis uh -huh. with uh, you know uh, the lovely people there, and um, it was. I wrote a play called Searching for the Lemons, which was about kind of my own identity and about this. Cipri esta yes, no. it was about essentially it was about a guy who was a graffiti artist, and um, no, sorry, that's that's another play. <laughs> 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 that was called Cypriot Graffiti. <laughs> Sorry, Searching for the Lemons was about my uh, uh, Greek identity and about the two sides of my identity pulling on each other, and one being, you know, uh, yeah. pro wanting to live in Cyprus and the other one being born here and um, and wanting to, to learn, you know, mm -hmm. more about his, his life here and, yes. and be at home here. So the two didn't really, you know, kind of, they were like brothers, but they, they were kind of representative of the two sides of me. I didn't really know, you know, Vasily my identity until well into my uh, late 20s, early 30s, because I struggled to, and this is something I'm sure a lot of um, the Greeks in this country feel. Yeah, it's the same yeah, with many. They yes. struggle to find their identity in the diaspora and, and whether they're, you know, whether they're really British or whether they're British-born Greeks mm -hmm. or whether they're, you know, what they really are. And so I, I, I think I came to terms with that. Um, and even though I don't speak the language, I somehow, you know, ancestrally understand now more about my roots and more about my heritage and I've come to, to love that element of my own history. Whereas I think over many years I wasn't sure what I was. Uh -huh. and I think that's the same of a lot of different, um, you know, minorities from, yeah. from the diaspora. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you did a radio play, a couple of radio plays, I suppose. And the one of uh, done one a lot of, of radio two, work. Two of them we did uh, for LGR as well. Yeah, yeah, I remember we did uh, Boxenia, didn't we? Boxenia, yeah. Uh, that was in English as well, yeah. That was in English, written yeah. by uh, Andy Gumi. Andy Gumi. Yes, uh, that was a very funny play. And, and we you took wrote it to one uh, yourself. Yes, I did. And you play the main part. Yes, it the was taxi a taxi driver. What, what, yeah, it was about yeah. a taxi driver. Yeah. Um, Divorce made difficult. Ah, yeah. It was called. Uh, o horismos fenis colias. Yeah. Yes, I and, remember. And we, we put did. it. We put it on LGR, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. We, we did. We did. Greek. Yes. Yes. Um, mm. So yeah, I've done a variety of writing over the years, uh, but mm. I suppose the main thrust of what I've been doing is really the acting work, and um, I've done some television in the last year, which is wonderful, and recently changed my mm -hmm. agent, and uh, so yeah, I did a movie this year mm -hmm. uh, called The Brutalist, which is uh, going to be coming out next year. Uh -huh. But uh, you did a movie yeah. uh, with the very famous singer actress Evita. Madonna? I did. Oh, I danced God. with Madonna. You danced? <laughs> I danced. I think I, I, well, how was it dancing with Madonna? Well, she was lovely. I mean, she was heavily pregnant at the time with her first child, I think. And um, w she wanted me to dance with her in a scene off camera so that uh, Antonio Banderas could have a good eye line. Ah. So we did it as a favour to him. Ah, okay. um, and she was charming. You know, she was nice. Um, and she was actually, I think... Very underrated in that movie, Madonna. I uh, thought she would. She deserved a lot more praise than she actually got. She was fantastic as Evita in mm -hmm. that uh, film. And yeah. Alan Parker, sadly no longer with us, yeah. w w is a wonderful, wonderful director, and was mm -hmm. was uh, he directed that? So. Okay, shall we show um, a small, about three minutes, you know, uh, like a showreel, so people can get 
a little bit more. About it's on you. the website if you want to see it. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to show it. Okay. We're going to show it. Okay, well, okay. sure, why not? Let, mean, let, go let's ahead. go and see it. Okay. Mentioned earlier on, you, you did some, uh, you know, uh, you did the film, uh, you know, uh, recently and you did the other... Um, yes, you know, with Adrian yes. Brody, that was the movie. Yeah. And Guy Pearce, it's called The Brutalist. Uh, mm. We shot it um, mainly in Hungary. Uh, Budapest and uh, it's a fantastic film that's coming out next year and then I did an episode of Grantchester mm -hmm. which is on British television playing a nice part in that and then I did something called Chaos which is a retelling of the Greek myths and that's in uh, was in Rome and then I did something called The Serial Killer's Wife so yeah, it's, it's been cool. a busy old few years and I also voice video games I don't know if anybody out there plays a lot of video yeah. games but uh, Assassin's Creed I'm, I'm, you know I'm on that and I have been on that for, for several years and there's another one called a Pharaoh Total War, mm -hmm. which I'm, uh, I've got the voice on one of the characters on that. So yeah, yeah that's nice. But uh, we were together. Do you remember in which, uh, you know, uh, what well, the little <laughs> the little comedy duo we used to do? <laughs> well, a little comedy. We did something before that. I mean, I've been in a couple of episodes of uh, what do you call it? Um, what Birds of a Feather? Birds no. of a Feather. Yeah, I know. Yes. I remember you, you were in the episode where m my mum died. God bless her. Yeah, she died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. my mum and dad were at the <laughs> their own wake. <laughs> so, that was very funny seeing my mum, yes. you know, weeping at her own funeral. So, and and we did. Uh, they were playing extras, of course. So that's how they managed to be there. Anyway, sorry, can I interrupt you? We did. Uh, we did uh, plane spotting as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I remember that. Blimey, yeah, you remember more than I do. You see, I'm getting so old that I don't remember half no, the stuff that not, I've done. No, not just that. Anyway, uh, so, okay, any future plans? I mean, you say you're getting old, but you're not. I mean, you're still a young man, and uh, you manage to get more parts and all this kind of thing. So, what is coming? Ktibak silo. Ktibak silo, yeah. Ktibak silo. What is... Um, well, I've got several a, things uh, yeah. which uh, I've developed um, something, uh, a musical divertissement uh -huh. called Falling Stars, mm -hmm. which is music from the 1920s. And you can show a little trailer of that if you oh, like. We can, we can do that. Because yes. I did that with an actress called Sally Ann Triplett. Oh, we and can I do that. I'd spent, uh, you wrote it? I mean, yes, I did. Ah, okay. yeah, I wrote oh. all the... Um, yeah, the, the the book I wrote, yeah. and all the music and the songs ah, were written by people from the 19, stage. 1920s. Yeah. Ah. yeah. Okay, I think it's a good idea to see this as well, and then we carry on. Okay. Okay, let's go and see Falling Stars, yes? Falling Stars. Falling yeah. Stars, we can see the trailer. Okay, let's go. There's a guy I'm wild about Every time he takes me out When there's no one else around Day will break And you'll awake And start to bake A sugar cake For me to take For all the boys to see You never know as a singer What glorious forgotten melodies You might uncover in this sort of a place So yes, we have no bananas He has no Bananas today. Peter, uh, usually, usually, um, I ask people to uh, just give us an example of uh, their singing, all this, because you are a very good singer. Do you sing a uh, cappella sometimes? You know, I mean. Do I sing a cappella? Sometimes I do. I mean, how about I, this, I remember. How about this, this time? I remember I used to sing my, one of my father's uh, favorite songs, which ah. is a Greek song. Leineo Baljagis. Afto to spiti, puto vlepi skotino, apopsenarti, agoma. Something like that. And then I think the chorus is Palotis, 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 
Από μια αγάπη που δεν ζει, yeah. αφού σε ζούμε πια μαζί. Μπάρο τι θέλεις, Μπαλιατζή. Μπράβο ρε Πίτερ, και ορκωτούν εδώ. <laughs> λοιπόν, ε, ok, ε, any other future plans? I mean... Future plans, just to stay working. I, I want to mention one thing though. Yeah. Uh, which is something that I don't know whether um, when this goes out people will be able to, um, you know, uh, um, un uh, know more about the charity called the Royal Theatrical Fund. I'm a director of that. I'm a patron of the United Kingdom Thalassemia Society. But you are a director also, of the other I'm a director charity. of a trust, which yeah. is the largest uh, theatrical charity in the United Kingdom, the Royal Theatrical Fund. And every month we meet as directors and allocate grants to older actors who are in um, you know, residential care or actors who have uh, had some misfortune and an accident and can no longer uh -huh. work or have dependent children that they need to look after and they can't cover their expenses. And um, it gets, uh, you know, it helps an enormous amount of, of, of people. So that's another thing that I'm involved in. It's very close to my heart and I couldn't do any interview without mentioning the Royal Theatrical Fund. And we always need donations. We're always looking for help. Uh, because it doesn't just help actors, it helps directors, producers, people who work in the box office, people who work in lighting, people who work in stage management. So everybody that works in our profession in one way or another is helped by the Royal Theatrical Fund. So any help you can offer, rtf.org is the web page. Uh -huh. What do you want to say to the young people? I mean, uh, they have dreams and they looking uh, forward to uh, their um, future and all this kind of thing, to become uh, entertainers, actors, and singers and all this kind of thing. What do you want to say to them? Well, the best advice I suppose I can give is to try and live your dream. You know, try and live your dream. And uh, if that's possible, then, you know, do the thing that you love most and do it as well as you can. Uh, it is important that you, if you're going to be an actor, you know, and you want to uh, train as a singer, that you do get a good teacher. I think great teachers are worth their weight in gold. And whether you're a fantastic um, uh, athlete, or whether you're an acrobat, or whether, no matter what profession you may want to do, the teacher is there. You need a good there. teacher and coach. And, uh, yes. always there mm -hmm. at the core of, of learning. And if you learn from a great teacher, then you can do yourself no harm whatsoever. So get some training if you're going to be an actor or, or a singer, whatever, and uh, learn as much as you can about your profession. And also, go and watch other people whose work you admire. Go and watch their work and see what you feel about their work and how that makes you feel. And I think watching others, as I used to when I was a a younger actor. I used to stand in the wings and watch people like Anthony Sher, who was a wonderful a classical actor. Brian Cox, another, many people might know Brian Cox from Succession. I was lucky enough to be in a Shakespeare play with Brian Cox called Titus Andronicus, and I used to watch him from the wings. And um, so, yeah, yeah, watch people whose work you admire. Watch people and, you know, yeah, okay, try and leave, try and leave your dreams, as you say. Yeah, yes. I, I was told as a very young, uh, I worked in a dressmaking factory before I became an actor and I used to go for a breakfast every morning in a place called the Green Angel and I got chatting to this guy and he had this mole right in the middle of his forehead and I said to him I want to be an actor he said to me he said, live your dreams live it do it do it I said oh, that's great thank you so much he said I want to I want to be an actor he said do it live your dreams and then uh, two years later um, I've got to tell you the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that he told me that he was going to write plays. He said, I'm going to be a playwright. He says, I'm writing a play at the moment. It's on in the East And End. he wrote a play. He wrote a play. <laughs> then two years later, two years later, I see this guy's face on the side of a billboard um, for, on the advertising for a uh, As a playwright. And his face is enormous. Oh, my God. There's war in the middle of his face, these fixed yeah, grey yeah, yeah, yeah. eyes fantastically handsome man and that was Stephen Burkhoff. Oh my god. Now Stephen Burkhoff is a very famous playwright and I just had to be talking to him and um, it was one of the things he told me that I never forgot. There is another part to that story which is 30 years later I happened to go and meet him backstage after he was doing a play 
uh, because I was with someone who'd worked with him. And I said to him, I told him this story. And he, he, he remembers. He, he put his hand on my shoulder like this and he said, he said, and now look at you. He said, <laughs> yeah, you've done well, haven't you? Yeah, You're yeah, a yeah. very well-known actor. Yeah, well yeah. done. <laughs> he kind of, you know, yeah. it's a great bookend for the story. Yeah. So. How about, uh, I mean, community in Cyprus, how close are you? I wish I could say I was close. I wish I could say I was closer. I'm close with my family, um, and I, but I don't, I mean, apart from working in Cyprus, I directed a, a thing called Big Ma Pygmalion in Cyprus, Pygmalion, and I did yes. a TV series there called Sunburn. But apart from doing those pieces of work there, I don't really know much about the artistic community in Cyprus. Though when I was there recently, I went to go and see a play in a local theatre in Limassol, and, um, you know, I, I do take an interest. Was it in Greek? Play. It was in Greek, it yeah. Was, yes. yeah. You understand it? Yeah, I did. I well, do understand Greek, I just don't yeah, speak yeah, it yeah. properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when I speak it, you know, I feel like a manon. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you say manon? Is that an idiot? <laughs> idiot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because yeah. my, my vocabulary is limited. Yeah. But as far as the Greek community is concerned, I'm, I'm very... I always read up about what's going on in Cyprus. Uh -huh. I'm always interested to hear what the politics and how the politics of Cyprus are developing. And the obviously the impasse and the, the state of um, you know stasis that there is in the negotiation process and, and about the continuing occupation uh, of the island. Mm -hmm. um, so it does interest me. Uh, but from the point of view of someone who looks at it from afar, um, and uh, whilst you know my relatives live there and, and work there, and uh, I, I, I love enormously, um, I, I feel, I suppose, more British than anything else. And uh, I, I, I would love to have a solution for the Cyprus problem. I don't have one. Uh, and I know all sorts of people much cleverer than me have got ideas about what the solution should be. Um, mm. But I too ca do take a keen interest in what's going on in the papers and in the, the yeah. news. Okay, before uh, we uh, uh, say uh, good night. Goodbye. Uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Kick me out. I w no, no, no. I want, I want you to tell us uh, again about the 19th of October, about the thalassemia. Uh, National Day. Okay, so on the 19th of October, uh, it's National Thalassemia Day. Uh, a day when the United Kingdom Thalassemia Society uh, nationally comes uh, together with organised um, events up and down the country uh, to raise awareness about thalassemia. And I'm a patron of the uh, charity and three of the other patrons, uh, Tonya Buxton and uh, Gibros as well, is going to be there. Kibrianu, yeah. Yes, Gibros Kibrianu is going to be there. And uh, we're going to be at LGR all day, London Greek Radio, to talk about and answer questions um, to do with thalassemia, to highlight and hopefully educate and also to um, maybe raise some money as well, uh, but to get people more involved and in understanding what they can do uh, to help um, you know, the, their awareness of, of, of thalassemia. You know, the, one of the biggest things that you can do is to give blood yeah. because uh, thalassemics need regular blood transfusions. Mm -hmm. And so that is a huge, huge factor. Or you can also just get tested for the gene. And I know that the, in Cyprus they're very, uh, you're very on top of all that, but over here uh, you have to go and get tested. It yes. doesn't happen automatically. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. They, you have to, they have to do it, yes, it's important. Well, we're also trying to, we've got an all-party parliamentary committee uh, about thalassemia and sickle cell disease. So during um, those committee meetings, we're trying to get um, a, 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 a national approach to uh, health care uh, for thalassemics. So there's a, a, you know, a national standard for thalassemics. Yeah. Lovely. Peter, it's been nice to have you here. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you for, you know, a couple of years, I think. And I miss you, honestly. And then uh, I'm happy that you're here. And I'm happy we travel back to the future. And we... Um, That's remind, very current, back to the future. We remind, <laughs> we remind <laughs> ourselves about uh, quite a few things. Yeah. And uh, you know something? I'm looking forward to do something together again. Even for the radio or something else, you know. I mean, you know, do you think it's a, that is a possibility? Of, uh, 
working with me again? I don't know, Revasili. You don't know? Uh, well, yeah, how maybe. About, how about a radio, like a 10-minute uh, radio play, you know, a comedy, just to entertain? Uh, I have uh, developed a character called Michael. Michael. Michael is a barber. Okay. And I've done, on my website, okay. you can pick up, it's a little podcast that I'm doing, and Michael, he, t he talks like this the whole time because he's from this country, and he has this, he has a Greek accent, but he's very thick. And he does people's hair. Okay. And whilst he's doing their hair, he talks to them about what various various things. things. Yeah. Things, yeah. Yes. But Jokes he also with them he talks country. about he talks about, for instance, he had an actor in his shop. Ah. So I've had an actor, an actor in my shop. Yeah. An actor, a very famous man, very famous. Yeah. I, well, I won't tell you who he is, but he's a very famous man. And he's just a lovely character. So maybe we could do something with Michael. Yes. I don't know. I'll tell you who I yeah. have just been working with, Alexander yeah. Theo. Oh, yeah, Alexander Theo. You remember Theo. Alexander Theo? I, yeah, did, I, I just saw did him a short uh, film. a couple of weeks ago, yes. I just did a short film with Alexander. Uh, sorry, are we running out of time? Because yeah. I, I don't know how long we've got. No, no, carry Okay, on, fine. Carry on, Can yes. I talk about that? Yes, please. I did a short film recently with a guy called um, Alexander Theo. Theo. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Alex is a very, very fine actor, but he, he also has this character called Sulla. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little short film called Kubebkia, which is the, the Cypriot word for the Madis, you know. Exactly, you know. yeah, yeah. And um, it's written by a, a trans woman called Sophia Vai. Uh -huh. And it, it's a lovely story. I play a widower whose son is engaged to another man. Ah. And he goes to his son's engagement party. Okay. And he meets this trans woman there uh -huh. who has cooked the Kubebkia. The Kubebkia, yeah. And that's how they meet. They meet over the Kubebkia. No, and no. it's a lovely little film. But I just want to say that Alex and I have been talking about maybe working, you know, maybe putting Michael and Sulla together, which might be fun. Oh, why not? Yeah. But why don't you put Michael and Tolis together? And to who's Tolis? Tolis is me. It's your character? Yes, yeah, my character, yeah. Oyero Tolis. <laughs> Oyero Tolis. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I did, do you remember <laughs> Young, Gifted and Greek? Yeah. And we used, to have, we used to have a little granny sitting yeah, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and he yeah. said, what's so, so? What's so? What's so? What's we had some fun, Peter, didn't we? I don't know. Let's, you, see, yeah. let's see what happens. In, yeah, you know. yeah, let's see what happens. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We talk about it. Yeah. We can talk about yes, it. Yes, we yes. Talk. It's a good Always idea. I mean, yeah, I believe you're um, capable of doing this. And because uh, we know each other and we worked with them before, I think we can do it. You know what I mean? We can make people laugh. I hope so. Yeah. I like trying to make people laugh. Um, yeah. Thank you, Peter. My pleasure. Eh, Haristopoli. Kiero, Kiero Haristo, Kie, Sas, Efume Kalindi. Kabuedo, na fiasti sume Kie Sas, tus kalus filus telisades. Ego Kie Sis, ta imaste mazid din ekhome li Griegi, din ia ora mena alo prosupo i prosupa. Mekri tote na prosehe dios aftusas kalis anit. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. According to the highways department, there are seven cameras covering that intersection. You've seen everything. Right. Everything but his face. Let's do this. Hmm? Now, if the answer is yes, you've seen this man, just say yes. Or better still, don't say anything. I know what you mean. That way, no one can accuse you of lying. And no one can accuse you of giving up your friend. Hmm? So, have you ever seen this man around here? Accurate. 